Hello YouTube, hello MGTOW, hello Red Pill, and hello anybody from the Less Than Lethal crew. Now we're going to talk to you about projectiles, weaponry, less than lethal and less than lethal. Now, first, I'm going to give you some basic rules. Treat, and you, it's, going to, it's going to be little thing, words that help you remember. Treat, never, keep, keep. Treat every weapon as if it were loaded, whether they're lethal or non-lethal. Never point a weapon at anything you don't intend to shoot. It meaning, translating, don't pull it out the freaking holster until you're ready to fire it. Keep your web, keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you intend to fire. Keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. If all done properly, it should look like it should look like your hand is in a C grip, your ring, middle, and pinky finger are grasping the handle with your thumb wrapped fir firmly around. Your finger is straight inside while it's inside of the holster with your weapon on safe. It should look like this, like you're reaching into your pocket with your finger straight. That's what it should look like. Now, if you're carrying a rifle, it should, it, you should be basically having it straight, your finger straight out of the, off of the trigger. And this is an unwritten rule. There is an unwritten rule that is incorporated into this. Know your target and what lies beyond it. If your target is, 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 a, is a little skinny man wielding a riot shield, you probably should know what's behind it. Because nine times out of 10, you're in an urban environment. So you've probably got houses. Now, we're gonna get into the certain ordinances of firearm and less than lethal because I, I i just there's just something that i really can't stand it's just somebody floundering around oh my goodness my head is killing me ordinance now basically anything that is faster than a nerf dart or has the potential to be lethal whether it's less than lethal or lethal rounds they all have a potential to be lethal when hit, when hit into the correct spot. Even pellet guns, even airsoft guns, when hit in the right spot, they can be lethal. Especially at a certain feet per second. Which is why certain airsoft fields have your weapon chronographed. Chronographed, well, you know what chronographed is? It's basically testing the feet per second of your airsoft gun. If it's above, if it's below a certain feet per second, it gets a green tape where you can engage at any range. If it's below, above a certain thing, you get a yellow tape or a red tape or a black tape because the feet per second are higher. Now, here's where things get interesting. Nerf gun. Slingshot or sling. Less than lethal. And somewhere between nerf gun and slingshot or sling is a less than lethal. Now, the ordinance Pretty much in general is basically anything that is charged, whether it be powder or pneumatic, mechanical, tension charged, is, can, has the potential to become a lethal weapon. Let's start from the Nerf gun, Nerf dart. Now, Nerf darts, you would, or would basically would be, would be assumption that, oh, they're not harmful. They can be modified and made harmful. And in fact, you can do some modifications to raise the feet per second and raise certain, certain, do certain things to raise the impact of the Nerf dart. 
I'm not going to tell you how. I know exactly how. I'm just not going to tell you. Now, a step up from that would be any assortment of paintball gun, airsoft gun, which is pneumatically charged or electrically or electric pneumatic charged. Pneumatic charged airsoft weapons and paintball guns typically run on either CO2 or compressed air or nitrogen, depending on the field that is being played upon. That is being played upon. Now, that being said, you, you have to get certain tanks hydrostatically tested every five years, depending on the manufacturer and the state you reside in. What is hydrostatically tested? They basically empty the tank, fill it with water, and they pressurize it to ensure that it will, will maintain its integrity. Now, the next thing on the list is a basically less than lethal round, also known as Grimbergs and Pepper Balls. Now, the pro now the thing with Grimbergs and Pepper Balls is they have a potential to be lethal. In fact, there's a st there's a freak. We were during certain training, we were told that only de only designated officers are allowed to use them things because a somebody bent down to tie their shoe they were aiming at a target at somebody else stood up and got hit in the eye and died yes they may be left in lethal but they have a potential to kill they have a potential to kill like i said they are, these are your, your pneumatics, your pneumatic section. Now, in, in around that section is your mechanical energy, your trebuchets, your bows, your slingshots, your slings. I'm going to go into each category. Let's start with the slings. Basically, you're taking a piece of freaking, you're taking a piece of cloth or, or leather tying a string around it, putting a rock or a Grimberg, less than lethal, pepper ball, whatever, spinning it around your head and releasing it at terminal velocity. You ever heard you ever seen a story of David and Goliath? Well that's what it, that's what it is. Either if you put it on a stick, guess what? You've got more feet per second. You have more feet per second. Next, the category are the slingshots. Now they have a max feet per second because there's only so, there's only, you can only stretch the rubber band or the elastic band, but so far, so many times before it loses its integrity and quality and becomes a hazard to not only the person, to not only the person you're firing it at or the creature or the thing you're firing it at, to the user as well. Henceforth, why they say, always use safety glasses. The next in this category, the mechanical category, are the bows and arrows, which is right about the same feet per second, in or around, give or take a few feet per sec, few hundred feet per second, as your Grimbergs, as your pepper balls, your paint balls. They fire roughly the same speed, but guess what? But guess what? They now have an arrow tip on them, a sharp tip on them. Now we're going into the trebuchets, the, all the artillery, the heavy artillery. Well, it's mechanical. It basically fires a missile. Now, trebuchet, there's, there's, there's gravity assisted. And then there's tension trebuchets or tension catapults. Catapults are used by tensions, same as with the ballista. Trebuchets are typically mechanical, whether it be electrical or gravity assisted. Now, you cannot 
go and basically just build, just just go in up there and build your own mecha- on your own trebuchet. There are certain ordinances you have to follow. Each state is different. Now, you, you could be, like I said, each state or each county is different for that. Because there are, you ever heard of the pumpkin chunkins? That also comes in the, in, the, in the thing with your potato launchers. Yes, I said potato launchers. <sighs> now, potato launchers, you have two. You have compressed air. And you have chemical potato launchers where you basically take care of spray, start of starting fluid, whatever, and you're basically just igniting it and watching it go through. Now we're getting in now that we've gotten out the small artillery, we are now going to get into the powder actuated or explosive actuated. Basically there's a there's a cat there's a there's a section where you're in the United States, where if you're a, well, I know back in the old days if you went to jail you turned in your fire your pistol, when and when you got out you got your pistol back, that's how it used to be, they didn't infringe on anybody's right to bear arms back then, but now you can't own a firearm if you're mentally unstable. Or or a convicted felon, you know, that's pretty much what it is. What certain people keep failing to realize is you cannot spurt nonsense. Like if you don't know what you're doing, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't mention it. Don't piss with it. Now, we're gonna get on to the cleaning and disassembly. There's a certain level that you go down to cleaning and disassembly. Now for civilians, it stops right around where the small components are being, what's the word, exposed. You don't want to expose the small components because, well, they're small components. They're easy to lose. But in the military, in the military, it's called level ten, level ten maintenance, where you can start exposing more of the smaller components to clean them. It should only be cleaned when only when necessary, especially the less than lethals. Otherwise, you damage the O-rings. And you do, and you never, you never put petroleum jelly on the O-rings. You'll blow them out. They will deteriorate the rubber. They will deteriorate the rubber. They will deteriorate the silicone on the O-rings. On top of that, there's a special, there's a powder that keeps the silicone from deteriorating. There's a silicone powder. You also have a special oils that are that are water based. No, we're not that are, some of them are water based. Some of them are more silicone conditioning to keep from blowing your O rings. Now you don't have to clean powder. You don't have to clean pneumatic actuated parts you put a light coating of oil of manual manufacturer specific oil but every time you cl- you basically use that manufacturer oil you have to replace the o-rings otherwise you will ruin them and then what <sighs> but then again if you're if you if you if you're not doing if you basically don't use the the weapon and you have it constantly charged, that causes damage to the to a red to a sp- specific part that keeps it charged. 
you're basically just destroying the o-ring by keeping it undercharged at all times but then again what do i know i don't know much about these less than lethals all i know is that like there, there may be less than lethal they can cause a lot of damage this is red pill in the wind signing off <laughs>